Okay, folks, so we're going to um, try and model this stove right here. It's supposed to be for the onward kitchen. I just can't find uh, any good images for it, but I think it'll be the same idea as uh, building this type of oven right here with the burner top uh, hardware right there, which I don't know what it is. Um, so we have knobs right there. We have this handle right here, which is basically the same thing as that. Uh, paneling is the same as well so um, a lot of this can be um, uh, recycled um, that thing maybe it's an exhaust or it's the logo so we'll kind of have to figure out later what to do with that one uh, so let's get started all right so we'll start with our um, uh, cube right here which uh, we'll use uh, I will actually put this on my other monitor here so I don't have to keep uh, uh, going back and forth uh, for this kitchen uh, four burners it's um, let's see here okay the rectangular shape right there all right so let's go to the front and let me turn on my uh, screencast right here it's super tiny though let's see we want it on the left and let's just kind of hopefully you guys can see that one all right so let's uh let's get with our uh just kind of eyeball uh it has five um uh what do you call this uh knobs all right probably that will do right there so let's go with some numbers here so we can i would say 1.3 on that x right there and then the depth for it uh that might actually work so this might be the open part okay so we're kind of blocking it real quick shift d to duplicate it we're going to move it up okay let me go to edit mode here and go to x-ray mode so I can see uh, through it and this will be the top right here where the knobs will be and uh, all right it's kind of blocking it there uh, let's get a cylinder um, in object mode you don't want to be creating new object uh, while you're in edit mode and it becomes part of it not unless that's the intention so a cylinder uh we're probably going to use subdivision surface on this one so uh i probably will drop this to 16 so that it's easier to manage okay we're going to rotate this um r x 90 so it's facing this way then i'll just scale it just to kind of block um where we're going to position those uh uh, knobs that they won't um, they actually fit all right so it's kind of just blocking it it's kind of seeing how um, the spacing will be and then uh, we'll get uh, them positioned properly okay so let me turn off x-ray real quick just go front right here I'm gonna shift D to duplicate that and then just kind of space them out of you know it's kind of eyeballing it right here looking at the photo it looks like um, they have equal uh, spacing all right putting two more there that would that would do it okay and then we have the burners uh, we have four at the top I'll just use a uh, same cylinder right here duplicate it bring it up rx90 again to make it stand uh, let's do some uh, scaling uh, this will be probably that thin for now okay we're going at the top let's position this okay and then kind of scale it and uh, there is a border for the top uh, so let me just kind of block how big uh, each one should be I'm going to turn on x-ray so I have I can see my grid so I can do like a quadrant right here they do have that uh, um, border around it so I will 
position it right here uh, using two grids all right and I'll right there duplicate it a G Y all right and then select both uh, there we go shift D to duplicate G X all right is that correct one two three just kind of looking at the grid actually right there probably is the perfect spot for it for now uh, uh actually no let's just center it like that kind of all right burners and i'm clicking the wrong things <laughs> okay so let's just kind of get those positioned just to block the model all right so we got those uh we got the um there's the handle there's the front and i think I think that will do it okay so let's uh, get started with the uh, with the top right here so I'm just gonna hide all this selection for now so they don't get in the way um, those two all right then we'll just turn them off and then turn them back on all right very important now we're gonna do some bevel and we want to get a 45 degree on that bevel uh, so we have to apply the transform right we just did scaling but you know all transform should be the same you know so that we get our numbers back to zero and once on the scale. I'll do the same thing for this part right here. Just so that when we do any type of modification, uh, modifier or even bevel, um, we get 45 degree uh, so that Blender knows that this is no longer a cube, this is a new shape. Okay, so it looks like the top, it's uh, pretty much beveled, um, heavily beveled uh, from uh, the top and the side the bottom not so much because it kind of looks like a cut but it also has uh, its own bevel but um, the top right here does have uh, um, kind of like a dip going in I guess that's when all the fluids supposed to be contained within the top and that's how you kind of clean it again we're eyeballing the uh, edge I don't know how far uh, it should go so I'm just going to press I for inset polygon and then kind of drag it in like so not too much um, we do want to see now uh, where the uh, those burners are so let's see all right so that will that kind of work okay we can kind of tell the dimension too here that that might uh, it's probably way too wide uh, than what I kind of created right there uh, but that might actually work We'll just leave it like that. Okay, so let's hide those again. All right, and then it, since it dips, um, we're going to extrude. All right, and not too much, um, but I think right here it does need to be scaled in a bit. Looking at all the edge right there, them being equal. All right, so it kind of slopes a little bit like so all right so now we're going to have our outside bevel uh going to edge mode okay so alt select alt click one and then it selects the whole thing uh shift click the sides they need to be beveled as well all right and what else here corners uh need to be beveled uh we'll see okay uh, this inside will have a different bevel from this one. This probably will get the same bevel as this. All right, the inside and then the bottom. So this one, it's quite curved. Uh, and we're going to have to remember our numbers here. So right click, bevel edge. All right, we're going to see that kind of angle right there. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to look at our offset here. So I'm going to go 0.05 to kind of round off that number so we'll remember it segments definitely uh, generous right there okay all right now let's take a look at how um, the bottom bevel would react to that existing bevel all right so now i'm going to select all the way at the bottom all the way to the top so it's shift alt click shift alt click 
uh, or let's make sure. Okay, I didn't want to connect the whole thing, so I'm just going to shift click it uh, manually. And I'm pretty sure the corners right here it will be beveled as well. So carefully select those. When you do selection like this, you need to verify that you did not select extra stuff at the bottom or inside and whatnot. Good way to preview it, simply go to X-ray mode, I mean a wireframe mode, just to kind of check that you did not add any extra selection. And even though I check like this, I always add some extra stuff later on and then it just creates some uh, uh, chaos that you need to fix and fixing stuff later it's it takes a lot of work okay so we got those so now let's do the uh, bevel it will remember the segment but not the bevel amount so there we go so we're gonna probably push it as much as right there probably less than the segments here because they're, those are tiny we might go with three okay now let's take a look if uh, we did too much here, it looks like that corner just got kind of squashed. Let me redo it. Uh, I'm thinking if we should, okay. Let's not include those corners for now. All right, so let's do the bevel again. I think that might actually work right there three segments and then the bottom we got three segments okay that works and this one is uh, 0 0.0115 so if we need to remember what those numbers are the other one's 0.05 this one is 0 0.0115 okay all right so let's take a look shade smooth it and all right looking Looking like the photo a little bit. Okay, so now on to the other parts. So um, now we're going to need the oven uh, front. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, go to the side viewport here and let's do some modification. Uh, we're going to uh, edit mode in X-ray so that when I select all the uh, points here, we get them selected. Again, I'm on my bowling the uh, the thickness of the door and uh, let's say that much okay maybe too much all right maybe one grid less uh, right there two grid and a half all right so it'll be the same all the way to the bottom and then um, it will have its base okay so um, let me also um, should have saved the uh, okay let me click undo okay uh, let me duplicate this there's a base I forgot about it um, is there a cut on the bottom part it looks like so there's kind of like three parts to it okay so um, we're going to duplicate this bring it down here and then um, we can scale Z axis and maybe that much right there okay so that'll be the base all right and um, this one um, we're going to have to uh, do the edit now the bottom for sure there's another part that's uh, uh, all right kind of like so kind of like the I think this is the uh, where you put the pots okay it's like an extra drawer okay kind of looking at it all right so that's that one then we're going to need another one for the bottom but everything here is riding on this uh everything we'll do here will be a duplicate of that one i'm going to put it right on the grid right there okay so um then we're going to select this part that will be the opening that will be the door two and a half maybe and at this point i should have saved a long time ago but we're just saving now uh make that up um, we're gonna go with uh, stove okay and let's say blender file actually I do want to put this in the uh, asset so that we can just bring it later okay right there and then um, uh, well let's make it easier for you guys I'm gonna click undo okay 
we will duplicate this shift D duplicate okay and then go to edit mode when we bring this over like so the other one is already kind of prepared you get this one select that one so we got the front there is a gap you gotta zoom in in here and then gap will be kind of created by the bevel so we want to make sure that there's contact there it's supposed to be sealed right so we got that uh, object apply all transform this one as well all right and i'm menu driven folks uh, because i do um teach and then you guys need to see what i'm clicking so later on you'll just do a lot of keyboard shortcut when it comes to that one and let's just do this uh, at the bottom as well object apply all transform again um if you want to know why we do that there's tons of video uh, before this that explains that basically that tells blender hey this is now uh, uh, its own uh, thing um, so that when you do bevel and all that you get 45 degree angles okay uh, no skewing let's uh, bevel the the door okay and um, let's just select this two I'm gonna press slash the one uh, with the question mark key all right and that will kind of isolate this and then when I want to see all the other one I press it again so it goes back so it's a great tool to kind of preview stuff right so um, the bevel for the uh, front I'm gonna go edge mode alt click uh, uh, shift alt click but it's not selecting because it's the outer one so I'm just gonna go with uh, shift click all those edges right here all right and then uh, remember the inside will have a different bevel okay and uh, for this one uh, we'll do a uh, right click bevel and then I forgot the uh, we have five on the segments and then the edge it's 0 0.05 if I remember okay all right so now moment of truth okay matching so I did remember the number correctly all right so now for this part right here I'm gonna select alt click all the way around we're gonna bevel this if I remember this correctly this is only three segments and it's 0.0115 all right so kind of again moment of truth kind of match the uh, the bottom right there okay good so that's good right there and we'll do the same thing for this one um, it will have the uh, I'm guessing the back will be the same uh, for this. So let's, uh, let's select this first, shade smooth it. Go back here and uh, we'll have the two together so that we have some sort of a guide, okay? So I'll select that one and I'm guessing the back as well. So shift click all this edges that goes all the way around. All right, so we got those and yeah we're gonna get those first maybe all right so right click bevel five segments 0 0.05 all right and then let's match the uh, front selected those all the way around right click bevel three segments and 0 0.0115 all right so now let's take a look we now have um, okay, starting to look like it okay awesome so now um, we're gonna copy that for the uh, bottom layer right here okay um, so all I need to do is let's go to the side so we can see both simply duplicate move them down here and here's uh, what everyone makes a mistake on this one uh, remember those bevels are 45 degree and people here usually uh, when you're this is kind of starting they would scale this to fit and the problem there is that you lose the dimension of your bevel because you squash the whole thing so do not uh, uh, do that undo okay what you need to do is move points okay so you need to go to edit mode go to point mode and select okay when you select and move them then you keep all the bevel okay I'm assuming here uh, see uh, you got to make sure that uh, you got your x-ray on and then when you select all the top right there you got everything selected and here we go we're just going to slide that down and then we got to work uh, our zoom right here to make sure that we have contact 
All right, we have contact right there. Okay, and then do the bottom as well. All right, here we go. Okay, good enough. So, uh, yeah, and then that's done right there. And let's save our file real quick before we uh, crash and then we cry. Okay, so there's that. All right, it's looking good. Uh, let's look at the bottom. It looks like there's um, for the leg part right there, and I'm guessing that would be kind of hollow. Uh, all right, let's do that. So, um, let's just kind of paranoid here apply all transform just in case I missed that part okay and then we got some uh, modifications to do so I think there's the leg that goes in there so we want to control R right uh, sorry edit mode first control R for our loop cut uh, left click at one time then you can move it down so again I'm eyeballing um, so this is where uh, we sweep the carpet I mean the, the bottom of the uh, or vacuum it all right so there'll be legs that would go right here so here's a little technique for the it's a lot of work because when you're lazy uh, so what I'll do is uh, I will do this control R that goes all the way so it's equal parts right until I see that that that's a division I want right there because I could just cut one right here and then cut another one right there and then kind of match it um, you know but if I scroll all the way like this and I could quickly select this so that's why I'm you know, I'm just gonna alt shift click this to clean up right this is a terrible way to do things but uh, the reason why I did that is that I get equal distance on that one since this is all equally cut right so then I go dissolve edge I got those two right if not you could you know you could control R loop cut that one loop cut that one and then you got your grid you got your reference then you're all you're not going to have to have to worry about anything, right? So I'll do the same thing right here. I don't even know how the thickness is. I'm guessing right here, uh, it looks like um, there is no side. It's just the front. I think so from the photo. Okay, so we'll just leave it like that. We're going to select that one and this one and the bottom. Okay, and we're going to get rid of it. Delete the faces and then we got this. All right, and it looks like the points right here they taper a bit. So select that point, that point, this one, that one, and that one right there. If I go to the front, they kind of taper a bit. So instead of moving those and then making sure they're equal, little technique here: scale them, scale them along the X so they taper a little bit forward, like so. Okay, maybe like that. Okay, and then we're we're good to go. So now we got to do our bevel. Uh, it's all transform, in case I forgot. <laughs> all right, so now uh, let me look at the bevel. It looks like it's the same. The bevel on the side is the same as the other one. So which is um, this one, I think, is uh, the 0 0.05. Yes, because it needs to match this, right? That's a 0 0.05 bevel. So bevel, it doesn't matter uh, right there because you type in the number here. 0 0.05, okay, we got that matching. All right, and then um, the top, I'm guessing it's the same thing as that corner right there. So Alt-click all the way around, Shift-Alt-click, Shift-Alt-click, Shift-Alt-click. You wanna make sure that that gets covered all the way. Uh, right click and bevel and then we give it segment of three uh, and it's 0 0.0115 all right there it is okay so now um, shade smooth we got to give it thickness and then we just simply use a modifier called solidify it gives it some thickness right there we want it as even thickness and then uh, we're going to give it uh, its thickness right here and it looks like it's uh, not responding well with the bevel let's see Get it uh, I want to make sure that it didn't cross the because uh, the limitation here is this one you they start convert you go th too thick and then it 
convergence right there would be the issue. So uh, let's see, would that be enough? Uh, there's probably reinforcement right here in the real world uh, to hold this thing. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'll, I'll leave it like that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. All right, and. I'm looking at some funky stuff with the mirror, uh, with the uh, normal stuff. Did I miss something? Uh, maybe not. We'll see. Um, let me go to select all faces. Uh, face right here, mesh. My normal. Okay, if we calculate outside, let me pull it. Uh, normal basically it's what's the inside or outside of the. Uh, okay, I pull the normals. Do they look right? No, they don't. All right, let's apply the solidify. So now it's it's a real mesh. You know, it's not just a. There's real thickness there. Oh, it went outside. So I didn't even notice that. Okay, so and when we have that one, I kept kind of messing with the number right here. All right, so right there, we'll go apply the. Uh, okay, and uh, let's see our normals. Recalculate the outside. I don't see it. It might be just. Because usually those are telltale signs that uh, something is not right. Because here you see it, it's even kind of. Um, uh, we'll see. Uh, undo. Okay. Uh, just maybe getting paranoid about that one, but. Uh, yeah, that could be something to deal with later on. Because I don't, maybe it's this weird cut right here. All right, let's see if we can uh, bevel that one to make it kind of like smooth. If that matters at all. Okay, and then we'll. Uh, No, that makes it worse right there. All right, anyway, we'll leave that alone for now. Um, let's go on to the other part. So now we got that one, that one, and uh, the handle. Kind of hard to see with the handle here. Um, so it looks like, uh, all right, it looks like a cone. Okay, we just need one and then we'll basically distribute it and then there's a no the knob I meant and then the handle has this kind of really retro look to it okay so um let's get a uh, cube I think we're gonna need a cube for that one but let's uh, let's do the burners okay so let me get the burners first uh, let's unhide those this for position so all this four things right here for now forward slash so that we get to see just those okay so if I were to create we need to uh, divide this okay so control R right here control R in here as well okay then we got to contain those areas right there um, best way to kind of do that is uh, we can do Let's do this one and then we can just, we just need to work with one. Um, let's try and kind of center our uh, burners here. So let me turn on wireframe so I get to see those. Let me kind of eyeball this and then just kind of put this to its max center right here. I think that's good right there. All right, okay, then we'll go with this. Uh, uh, let me turn off uh, wireframe now. Uh, select this face right here, and then we're going to press I to inset. 
polygon. Okay, might need to do uh, another cut before I do this. So I'm gonna click that and do. Let me do a Control R right here. Okay, here's a little technique. Uh, since we can't get a straight line from the Control R because we already uh, have that beveled corner, so what you need to do is push this all the way here. Okay, and it flattens itself, and then you retrieve it back. Then you get a straight line. There you go. All right. Then we do the same thing here, Control R. Again, it's not straight because you see the edge. Then you force it to go here. Then you bring it back up. Then you get a straight line. Assuming um, this is a straight line, right? So anyway. All right, so we got those. Let's go here. Press I, Inset. Okay, right there. So I'm going to use my loop tools. Loop tools are basically an add-on that you have to click on your preference add-on. Loop tool, make sure they're on. Mesh loop tools, okay. And when you right-click, you get this option. Loop tool, get a, a circle, so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to go with circle. All right, well, it's a little too big, but... There it is. Uh, it tried to make a circle out of that shape. So I'm going to just uh, rotate. Okay. And collect. So try to fit that burner right there. Okay. All right. What that will do now is allow us to do another uh, inset, like so. Okay, and uh, let's hide this. Uh, there we go. And if you got OCD, you want to straighten this, uh, you can. Uh, let's do that. Top. Just kind of eyeball it. At least it's kind of straight. Yeah. We got this selected. Then we can create that dip. So E to extrude. And uh, I don't know how that usually kind of works uh, that deep and then probably scale it a little bit all right now we have created this kind of little invention here all right so let's uh, add some uh, um, bevel to this now and we're gonna go with the transform I don't know if that did anything to the other so uh, edge mode Select all this thing going around it. Okay, bevel. All right, maybe something like that. Increase. It's let's go with point zero zero one. Oh, point zero one. All right, there we go. All right, so we have that, and then when we uh, finally add our subdivision surface to this one, this will look round like so. Awesome. We might need to reinforce this with some sort of uh, Control R right here. Uh, actually, no, uh, because there's the cut right here. Um, Probably I'll have to do a, a bisect or cut it with a knife all the way. But I don't mind those. So this is where we might need to add the, the corner bevel. Let me just try this. Maybe I should have done it before we did the other corner. All right, let me just kind of move it to make sure that that's okay. Let's try it. Okay, that will still work, I think. And then uh, subdivision service did not like that at all. <laughs> all right. Okay, we're going to have to uh, cut that manually. All right, should have cut that before I did the. Uh, did this uh, panel in here so like regretting that um, 
let's see I can probably most likely uh, oh yeah let's let's try that uh, I don't know what's gonna work I'm going to dissolve those four okay dissolve edges okay so they it's clean it still kept its thing it's probably not happy but here we go I'm gonna do control R here it won't let me because it's not a it's not a quad did he even though I dissolve you still have those okay let's uh it still won't go because it's not a quad maybe I could just bisect it so let me click undo so those are blocked let's see here um Where did it go? Uh, there you go. Bisect. Okay, let's see. Can you? Oh yeah, I have to snap this actually. All right, now the tool is active. I can just. Hmm. Thought that's what you used to do with a bisect. You just point at it. And no? Okay. Never mind then. Probably did something with the object. Alright, I'm just kinda bummed out about that corner that I forgot to uh, cut it here and I don't want to do the extra work oh okay I know what to do so I will select it and simply we don't need that for now we just want to preview it so I'm gonna click control plus till I get the whole thing right here so what I'll do is separate this thing right which we need to do anyway uh, I think that will work okay uh, so I'll just go P okay so that's separated right and what I'll do is uh, uh, go here we need to do this anyway remove those faces and then simply select this thing and duplicate it and snap it to that location, right? So it's now kind of like that. All right, so we don't have to do that for all the spots. So Shift D, and I want to, uh, let's see if we can snap uh, to increment. Will it snap it exactly? No, uh, maybe points, vertex right there. Since it's not an active vertex, will it not snap? Probably not. What about an edge? No? Okay. No snapping. We'll just eyeball it. Alright, let's take a look here. Go to wireframe. So that's GX. Later on, we'll merge it, and then you wouldn't know. But here it is, GX. Maybe this time we can snap. All right. Zoom out. We got this two now. Shift D. Then we'll move it down here. So that's a GY. Yeah, we should have just snapped it. All right, here we go. G Y. All 
All right. Uh, now we can uh, connect those. Uh, we can join all of it. So I'm going to select all of those and then control J that becomes a single object. All right. And uh, we want to make sure that there's no gap in between. So I'm going to go point mode, press A to select all, and I'm going to press M, okay, by distance right here. So it will start merging them by distance, and then there's no, uh, as you can see, if I crank this up, it just collapse, right? So move that back to uh, 0 0.0001. So whatever that distance is, I'm going to click it one more time to the right, and it starts merging those, so that's too much. So I'm going to move that one value remove one of the zeros and all right so that should be close enough to kind of fill in those gaps right there okay so here the problem is uh, once we add subdivision surface to this one uh, we're going to have that kind of soft kind of corner matching this one right here uh, especially when we go with a higher number but it does gives us that really smooth round shape right there and this one's going to follow uh, for sure right there um, would I give it that look I wish it's a cornered one I wish I put the uh, reinforcement in there uh, but uh, let's see now okay I'm gonna do control R on this one right here so if I push it like that it, it, it kind of fixes that one maybe I don't want it too close okay maybe right there Okay, and then here we're going to go another one. All right, now question is, will this one do the same thing? If I reinforce a control R like so. Oh, okay, it won't do it, but I can extend the top right there. I can do a, okay. That will not be enough. So what I'll do is uh, select all the points here. Oh, I'm still on bisect. Oh. All right. Select all the points here. Let's go with X-ray. Okay. And I can push this back. G uh, X. Right there. Okay. Then what I'll do with this one is convert that to edge and then just extrude it go like so and uh, yeah uh, and is that straight okay and uh, I'm gonna go number one. Oh, when I ex okay when I extruded that I should have used uh, press E and then GX. I want to make sure that it's straight. All right, and then I'll do the same thing here. Press one, select everything here at the top. Okay, GY. Convert as uh, edge mode. Press E, GY. All right, there it is. Okay, so now it's edge to edge oops sorry and we had that beveled corner okay uh, this looks like it's a separate piece but I think that's fine right there uh, it looks like it's a, it's a frame and then this one is a separate one I think we can get away with that okay and how do we fix the rest uh, well uh, we can just divide this thing into quad and then flip it over that would actually do it uh, and the same thing with this one uh, yeah so the quad right here is all we need and then we could uh, flip it over okay so we don't need to do all the extra work all right so let's do that one um, actually let me just select here and then zero plus Oops. Okay. Uh, 
Is that enough? Yeah. And then I'm going to do Control I. Delete those spaces. Okay. And uh, we could uh, build this up right here. And then this one right here, uh, we need to select the uh, faces that we want to keep, which is basically the corners. Okay, right there. And oh, the bottom doesn't have a cut. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't think we need to see that. That can actually disappear. Let me just grab the corner. Okay. Control I to invert my selection. <coughs> Excuse me. Double check. Delete. Now we got just this part right here and this one. Okay. So what we can do is uh, we can start uh, copying this over. So uh, the pivot point for this one, uh, why is it over here? Uh, let me just change it. Object set origin to 3D cursor. It's right there. Okay. So what I can do with this is Shift D to duplicate it. Okay. And then I will flip it over. So this is a really cool technique. I'm going to scale it S and then X, which is the axis, minus one. And it flips it over to the other side. Okay. We have subdivision here. So we got to get rid of that modifier for now because we are working on. Uh, trying to just make one spot, uh, one uh, area, and then flip it over to the other. So this two right here, I can Control J. Okay, so they're joined. Okay, and uh, we'll do the same thing for this one. Okay, so Shift D. The uh, axis is already there, so which is fine. The pivot point, Shift D. Right click to cancel the move. S X minus one. There's that, select the two together, control J, one piece, okay? So we gotta do uh, shift D again, duplicate it, okay? One way to do, instead of uh, flipping it over, you can also do R, rotation, hold down control, so it snaps, there you go. That, that will do the same thing. Select the two together, control J, right here, shift D, R, to rotate hold down control flip it over all right control J it's one piece all right let's uh, add the subdivision surface modifier um, all right and then we'll uh, select all the points okay and press M merge by distance It's not liking it. Let's get rid of this one. All the normals are kind of messed up. Let's recalculate them outside. Okay. That'll fix it. So they're all fused now. Let's do the same thing with this. Uh, do we have subdivision surface? Okay, here we go. There seems to be no issue uh, with this. All right, there's, looks like it's all done. Okay, let's go here, make sure we have our subdivision surface. Two by two. All right, now we gotta create those burner um, and the one right here for the burner itself, uh, we'll do that after. So let's take one of these because we just need one. Let me get rid of this one, this one, this one as well. Did we? All right, we got one more right here. Okay, so let's take a, take care of this one. Let's press uh, our X-ray, and this needs to be. I think it um, needs to be over, right? Um, trying to remember. Okay. 
kind of like that. Okay, we want to make sure we're on top. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that will do it. So here, let's do, um, uh, just select the top right here, and we're going to scale it, so give it a little bit of a taper. Okay, is it too high? Um, maybe. So I'm going to select this, and then bring it down a little bit all right kind of like that and then what I'll do is I'm gonna press I uh, inset polygon but before uh, okay my mistake okay before I tapered it okay let's select both press uh, apply all transform press I bridge all right so now we got the hole right there okay excellent and i do want to see the top right here while we're working so i'm gonna slash r okay so now on this one i can do my uh, bevel okay or my tapering all right so i'm gonna select the whole thing right here and i'm going to scale it in so it just kind of kind of slope in a bit like so Okay, and then we have to create that thing that just kind of goes around uh, this one. And uh, we'll uh, get that from uh, maybe this part right here. Then we'll do the exact same te technique we did before where we kind of create that kind of... Uh, we just have to kind of create like a grate or kind of like a snake looking metal thing. Okay, so um, let's just kind of isolate that for now. Uh, I'm gonna go to the front right here. I'm gonna press extrude Okay And then let's move that back a little bit like so so I got that going like so and I want to scale it along the uh, green axis right there All right And uh, Do a rotation Point it like so. All right, so all I did is basically grab that part and then just uh, extrude it and then kind of rotated it. So now when I extrude this again, we're at the front right here, I can keep rotating it, position it, scale it. So it's starting to kind of come in like so. Um, those points right here uh, probably have to move those up a little bit just so that they're not too uh, angular okay and uh, yeah I think we're almost ready here uh, I'm gonna go to the top okay shoot it this time to the front I do want to kind of flatten this now and then uh, I want to rotate this so that it's straight. But the best way here to flatten this is looking at this axis, which is the x-axis, is to scale it S, X, and then zero. You scale it at the zero uh, percentage, and then it just kind of does that. And uh, we want to taper this a little bit, so a little bit more scaling along this one. So that, there we go. Okay, so now looking at it from the top, I can just go extrude scale okay and then rotate this is where it kind of gets a little funky with the design because uh, they they don't like this okay extrude rotate and move and scale okay and then uh, another one maybe rotate this a little bit more extreme scale it a little bit more Okay, because they're they're holding kind of like they're supposed to hold the pot so they're like um, swirled right here it all kind of depends on the design and one more scale it rotate and move all right so kind of like that okay so what we want here is uh, flatten the top okay 
and bring it uh, uh, the same kind of level as all this. So I'm going to grab the edge, this one, all right, that one, and then this edge right here. We want to keep this as flat as possible, I think. Or this might actually work once we, yeah, maybe a little flat. Okay, so we got all those, and then what I need to do is scale them along the z-axis, s, z, zero, and of course they'll kind of turn flat like that. Okay, so um, definitely the bottom right here needs to uh, flat be flattened as well. Then we'll 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 do our design. All right, let me just select that one. All right, got all those. So the same thing, SZ0 flattens it, okay? And um, yeah, so um, we can see what this looks like in subdivision surface. All right, there it is. I think that's actually will work, except we need more, right? We need more of those. Uh, it kind of lost its volume here a bit because of that. We might need to. Actually, it's fine. Okay. So we just need to duplicate it. So same thing as the other. So we'll just, uh, what I'll do is duplicate it here. Okay. Uh, where's the, uh, oh, undo. Let's make sure the uh, pivot point is at the center. So set origin to geometry. Okay. But we want it kind of dead smack right here, which is, uh, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, we'll just uh, move this object right here where we think its uh, di uh, its uh, center would be. Um, actually, let's click and do. Let's bring out this top right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna do isolate them. Go to the top, okay, and then here we go. Select this one. Remember, there's that center. We want it centered to that one. So what I'll do is select those faces, okay, and then I'm going to tell the uh, uh, I want the cursor to snap to that selected. So it centered itself from all the selection, okay. Now that the cursor is right there, I'm going to tell this one to have its origin to the cursor. So now, when we rotate this, it's like a circle. Okay, that's exactly where it needs to be. So now if I duplicate it and then rotate it, then I'm going to hold down control so we could see where the pattern might be. So that's quarter right here. Excellent. Okay. And then uh, let's select both, duplicate, rotate, control. All right, so that gives us like a really nice kind of rustic type, you know, pot kind of thing. All right, so but we don't need all four. We just want to preview it. Uh, we just need that original one. Okay, let's turn off the... Uh, um, the subdivision surface or just kind of get rid of it for now okay so we just need a quarter of this one so we need it to rotate then um, so it's right here uh, is that a quarter for it okay so let's uh, try and uh, select um, I'm gonna grow my selection I think that's what we need to copy so that is it like one two three four Okay, I think so. All right, so I just want to make sure that that's selected. Uh, okay, so the bottom is not. So let's add it. Okay, let's isolate it. Let's make sure. All right, okay, so I'm going to invert the selection, delete all these faces. We are stuck with that one. And then this is where we duplicate one time, Shift D. Rotate, Control R. And then we got that. Select both. Shift D, Rotate, Control. All right. 
So now we just need to join all four. Okay, and then you know the drill. Uh, press, select all the points, M to merge by distance, and then we get our little number right there. All right, I click that, and then as you can see, I don't know if you notice, let me do it again, M. When I click by distance and I increase this number. Oh, all right, okay, I, let's do, okay, now there's still, we still have the gap, all right? So I'm gonna go point mode, so press A to select all. M, by distance, it already merged. It's a little too much, so we're gonna go with the point one right there. So if I press just one time here to the right, it did all this, did it connect anything here? No, it looks like that's, okay, looks like it did it. And um, let's see here, we need to recalculate the uh, normal. All right, nope, okay, let's add the subdivision surface. All right, there's that. Let's say we want to reinforce this one, make it a little bit more rigid right here at the base. Okay, we can do a control R. Or even here, if we want, I think it's fine right there at the top, how it is. We can do a control R right here, and then it just makes it a little bit more kind of rigid looking. You can see here it's not as smooth, more kind of industrial type, right? Um, I can click undo. Uh, I probably, probably put it here. So if I make a ring close to the bottom right here, it stops that kind of really soft uh, kind of bevel right there. It makes it more looking a little bit more stable. All right. And let's say on this one. So let's say we want to give it a little bit of um, roundness to, the, uh, to this, maybe up to here only. So one, two, three, four from the uh, right there, okay. Then I can go to my move tool and then maybe, maybe just move that up a little bit. So it gives it a, kind of like a little bit more rounder top. Okay, that looks like it's done. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, let's go to number seven. Bring out everything. All right, and then let's start kind of positioning that. Okay, Shift D, and we're going to have to redo this again anyway, uh, since we just want to complete it here because once we do the texture. Oops, I'm sorry. Once we have the texture, then uh, that's when you want to duplicate it. But we just want to kind of see it. And then we got to randomize the rotation so that they don't look like it came out of Lowe's or Home Depot. All right. Okay. There's that. And then um, what else do we need here? All right. Uh, we'll. Uh, We'll continue the video doing the other parts.